This is a short video on the mechanism of disease for chest pain or ST elevated myocardial infarction. That's a heart attack with ST segment elevation. In this video, we'll be talking about the concepts that lead to the symptoms and some of the lab and imaging findings for these diseases. And in this case, the disease we're looking at is an ST elevated myocardial infarction that causes chest pain. There's this kind of key or legend on the side that'll help you categorize each of these boxes, and we'll be building a flow diagram that shows how these concepts relate to each other. So let's get started. First, in the beginning, um, at the heart of a lot of this is atherosclerotic plaque buildup. And there are several things that contribute to this in people. One large component is the social determinants of health. This is referring to the lifestyle, the food that people eat, the amount of exercise they get, if they use tobacco products like smoking, if they consume other forms of nicotine, and if they use cocaine. Um, those, in addition to genetics, if there's a past medical history of heart attacks, can lead to varying amounts of atherosclerotic plaque buildup in different people. Now when you have plaque buildup in your arteries, they can narrow the vessels and they can also rupture. So those are two kind of distinct mechanisms that will branch off from here. And we'll talk about the sequela of both of these. Let's start with acute plaque ruptures. This can lead to decreased perfusion, leading to prolonged ischemia. If this happens abruptly, you can have a full thickness, also known as transmural ventricular wall um, death. So the tissue itself dies and the myocytes necrose. So the cells are actually dying for the full thickness of the heart tissue. This leads to a substernal chest pain called angina that does not resolve with rest. That's unstable angina. And on the molecular level, it leads to a leakage of intracellular ions and proteins from damaged cardiac muscle tissue. This is what causes the elevated cardiac biomarkers, your troponin levels, those will be high. So that's one of the signals that someone is having a heart attack. This uh, also leads from a physiology point of view to the myocytes leaking potassium ions toward the unaffected myocardium. And uh, this is directed away from the EKG recording electrode. This leads to the actual ST segment elevation on the EKG recording. Moving up here to the coronary artery narrowing, um, this happens when the plaque takes up the space of the lumen in the arteries, and this can uh, cause narrowing, which will reduce the blood flow, as we'll see, and it can also cause vasospasms. So when you have a pretty significant obstruction of the vessel diameter, up to 70 to 90%, you'll have impaired blood flow through the coronary arteries. And the cardiac myocytes, in this case, can sustain reversible damage. Um, this is damage that's reversible, so you're not going to have abnormal cardiac biomarkers, so those will still be nor uh, normal. Nonetheless, you can still have myocytes that are deprived of adequate amounts of oxygenated blood. So it still causes damage, and you can still have chest pain. Um, the, there are varying types of chest pain in this case. You can have stable angina, where your pain with exertion um, subsides with rest or nitroglycerin. This is a, med a medication that EMS often gives you to put under your tongue that'll uh, vasodilate your vessels and help with your, with your chest pain. You can have unstable angina in this case, which is similar to what we saw down here that does not resolve with rest. And there's also a third type of angina that's worth mentioning, vasospastic angina, which is pain at rest from uh, the vasospasms themselves. In any case, reversible and non-reversible damage can cause the ventricles of the heart to dysfunction. And um, the heart's primary purpose is to pump blood in the body. And when it does not do that, we get other symptoms. These symptoms are described here. So if you have a dysfunctioning ventricle, you'll have decreased cardiac output and decreased stroke volume. This leads to increased pulmonary pressure and venous pressure in the lungs, which can lead to pulmonary edema and can manifest as dyspnea or shortness of breath. In addition, when you have decreased cardiac output and stroke volume, you'll have baroreceptors that sense your reduced arterial pressure. So your blood pressure is low enough that your body's recognizing it. Your body's response is to activate your sympathetic nervous system, and this releases acetylcholine. 
This can trigger you to sweat, also called diaphoresis, which is another common symptom when somebody is having an ST-elevated myocardial infarction. So this diagram kind of covers the main lab values that we see, the elevated troponin, the elevated cardiac biomarkers, the ST segment elevation on EKG, as well as some of the more common symptoms like angina, diaphoresis, and dyspnea during an ST-elevated myocardial infarction. I hope this mechanism of disease was helpful, and thank you for listening.